Hi, Mark Fett here with yet another video on the Ultimate 64. You probably are sick and tired of it, but I just wanted to inform you that I've actually found various ways of uh, quality recording footage of the Ultimate 64. Now, I've, I had been using this, which is the Avermedia Live Gamer Portable. And this unit actually allows you to record HDMI, but also a component. But it, it, it's not really compatible with the signal, the HDMI signal coming out of the Ultimate 64, which is not exactly 50 hertz. And this really, the software that this uses, and also the standalone mode, really, yeah, just, just hiccups and just stops recording it after just a minute and a couple of minutes actually so it's not really usable for longer recordings but in the first video I shot I use this just for small clips it's okay but it starts to desync and then you know it just uh, craps out so yeah this is not going to be used with the uh, ultimate 64 now I have been recording a ton of my older analog videos with this Dazzle D VC 170. This actually stopped working the moment Windows became mostly 64-bit. There were never any drivers released for a 64 version of Windows for this device. It's an excellent device. It, it was able to capture co composite but also as video <laughs> It works, but only on very, very old Windows XP computers. I, I still have Windows XP computer, which I could use with this, but you know, you have to drag it around and stuff, so that's not a big deal. Then, because this Dazzle stopped working, I actually I got myself this, the TerraTech Grabby, which basically has the same inputs as video and uh, composite. And for some weird reason, unbeknownst to me it stopped working on windows just about a month ago or something it has to do with signed drivers not being signed anymore and the driver model of windows 10 64 bit changing around i i got this to work on my linux box my um, mint 19 box still is able to to use this in obs but it doesn't want to grab the audio for some reason which is weird so i couldn't use this on my linux box and i i wanted to capture footage now what i did for the the third video with the gameplay just showing you cartridges and stuff the last video actually i did i used a pioneer that's over there whoops it's over there underneath the tv i uh i used my Pi pioneer aid H, what is it? DVD 530. It's a, it's a, an HD DVD video recorder that we've been using as a PVR for, well, in the early 2000s. And it has RGB out, RGB in, a composite in, component out. So it's actually a great system for capturing older, older uh, games and stuff. But it does introduce a bit of a lag, so you have to use a T-junction, you know, have to, one signal goes into recorder, one goes into the, uh, the TV itself. But it's recorded interlaced and you get these comb effects. Um, if you look carefully, you can actually see those in the last video. So I wasn't really happy with that. And my video grabbing capabilities for these various older systems rapidly have become null. You know, it's like a big conspiracy with these companies trying to prevent us from actually uh, capturing analog video or HDMI video. So I've, I, I had been searching around and then I came across this. It's not a cheap device. It's the uh, Elgato HD60S. There's also an internal PCI Express card and it basically features HDMI in, HDMI out, analog in, and it, yeah, it allows you to grab footage. And because I I need 
to invest in something that is compatible. This is also compatible with Mac and Windows, so, you know. This doesn't want to work with my Mac. Uh, this doesn't want to work with my Mac. This does, but uh, it doesn't capture the Ultimate 64. Well, this one, the Elgato, it just takes the uh, Ultimate 64 output and just you know just does it it just works I've I've just hooked it up and it was instantly recognized in OBS I just configured it to have the line video in of the line audio in from the from the Elgato uh, the video from the Elgato and I just recorded it and the only downside to it is actually that it sort of defaults to 60 frames per second in <laughs> hence the name with the included software you can actually set it to 50 frames per second but for some reason the original software doesn't want to record when it's OBS does so um, yeah I just figured let's take a listen to that Blade Runner soundtrack by L-Man because that's actually awesome it really if you if you capture it with uh, with the HDMI audio you really get the the sense of stereo that I actually have when I listen listen to it myself in, in my game room yeah I'm not gonna bore you with any ultimate 64 videos unless you guys want me to make some more about them because I'm really very stoked about this device I could actually compare the Ultimate 64 with the Chameleon 64, which I also have. I, I found a way to record footage from that. And I could also do the Mist, because I have a Mist. It's an FPGA. The Chameleon 64 is an FPGA unit. I could record audio off of that, video off of that, and just make some videos on FPGA if you guys uh, are interested. Let me know if you are. I am, but you know, <laughs> it could be that you guys are just like, oh no, no, not any, no, 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 no more videos of FPG. I mean, we can't stand it. So, uh, so yeah. Well, let's go have a listen to uh, to that uh, Blade Runner sequence, that complete sequence. It's just awesome. Yeah, you just don't get the same uh, feel and auditory experience when you play it on an emulator and uh, of course you could play it on uh, a single SID single SID uh, computer but I don't think that'll work as as well so with the ultimate 64 and its dual shit configure shit <laughs> dual SID configuration actually it's a quadruple SID configuration because it does two SIDs in the FPGA unit and it also allows you to use real SIDs and there's SID tunes with three SIDs I've not found any others that use even more but the difference is just amazing well let's go have a listen to Blade Runner and if you don't like Blade Runner well you could probably stop the video and uh, note that this Elgato 8060S you can record uh, proper footage of the Ultimate 64 even in PAL mode which is great so I could actually stream Commodore 64 games. I could, I could, you know, the, the sky's the limit with uh, the Elgato HD 60S. It is a very, quite expensive. It's like 150, 170, sometimes even more. Yeah, I think it's worth it, but oh well. <laughs> Let's have a listen.